see here for Retire Cheap that Asia, and we have a special guest I'm going to have a conversation with today, which you all might recognize because how many videos did we do before? Three or two or I think four. Four total. And if you haven't seen those, and you'll understand why they're probably important in a minute, I'll put the link in the description uh, so you can go back to the first one. And maybe I'll put the link to all of them uh, so you can go through them so that you understand why we're having a conversation today because a lot of stuff has happened over the years to Mr. Bruce. <laughs> so and we started out our conversations where you had come over having a recollection of Thailand that you wanted to see if it was still the way you had remembered you had been married to a Thai lady before and you're thinking about retiring and that's got to have been we did that interview maybe six years ago uh, September of 2011 I, I checked <laughs> well, great I'm glad this you did coming September will make six years I've known you Wow amazing, amazing. it's just amazing where did time go yeah that's six that's years. isn't that incredible it it's amazing. The days go so fast, and I don't do anything, and they go fast. <laughs> Retirement's a full-time job. I know, and I, you I never do finish. my best at it, too, yeah, yeah. I work so hard at it. So, uh, to get everybody up to speed, I haven't seen the other ones, so you, you did come over, and then you went back, you crunched some numbers and stuff like that, you were driving a truck, um, saving a long-haul truck. Living cheap. Saving money, living cheap, living in, uh, you started out living in, in the truck and lived with your, in a trailer and stuff like that so you could save and the money. even some in my storage unit. <laughs> there you go. But and I leased my house out and it's been making money for seven, eight years now. Uh, so it's, you know, but I knew that's what I was going to do. And I come here and for three months, you know, crunch numbers. Is it possible to live a decent life on Social Security, basically? I have more than that, and, you know, sometimes you go over that amount, especially when you end up in the hospital. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've kept records for the entire time since I came over that time in 2011. Uh, of everything I spend and it keeps you conscious of where your money goes very good and uh, you know what you're spending it on and so it's uh, it's taught me a lot of stuff to you know just open up my consciousness of paying attention to money and what I do and what I can get for it and I don't lack for anything <laughs> You know, basically, go where I want to go, do what I want to do, and uh, not that I do anything every day, but when I want to do something, I can do it, mm -hmm. and all on Social Security, and I usually save money every month when I don't go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Have you, if I ask you, do you know, as an average, how much money, because I have people on YouTube who say, oh, you'd say you can live, you know, $500 a month, and you say, you know, there's no way, and life's going to be horrible, and you're going to be you know, I, sipping beer out of the 7-Eleven on a curb. And I've never had any month here where I've lived on $500 a month. But including the money I spend on immigration, on health insurance, gasoline, food, entertainment, rent, cable TV, Wi-Fi, telephone, everything. My expenses last month was 28,673 baht, which equates to, to about 700 under 850 dollars, I think. I forget what it is. And that was a fairly cheap month cuz it didn't have to run the air conditioner. Yeah. It's been cool, you can leave the screen door open, you know, and run the fan uh, now in April, when it gets really hot here, you run the AC all the time, and you, you know, two or three thousand bought more than that to to stay cool. And I haven't, you know, gone in on any big trips or anything. It's January nineteenth made one year 
when my accident happened. So I've been recuperating for one year. Yeah, so let's get to that. Since I saw you last time, which has now been, well, not since I, that's last time I saw you. Yeah, it up. was like uh, February and I was in the hospital with two broken legs. <laughs> yeah, well, people have been asking me, I get asked all the time, whatever happened to Bruce? Is he still around? Whatever. I said, well, one day we'll get together and we'll talk about what's happened since the last time we had a conversation. And so just... And, you know, briefly, because you could get into a lot of detail, a lot of stuff has happened. You, you bought vehicles, you've crashed vehicles. <laughs> so go ahead, give That's everybody... That's what I have them for. <laughs> That's right. So give everybody a rundown here I of... I determined um, that, that gravity works consistently throughout Thailand. Yeah, <laughs> it pulls me to the ground periodically and bangs me up. Uh, yeah, I, I own a... 22-year-old Nissan uh, NV, mm -hmm. and I own the, the Stallion, 150cc, that kind of looks like a little baby Triumph. Mm -hmm. And then just last month, I bought another Yamaha scooter, 125, with the Tri-City with the two wheels in the front. Yeah, yeah. And it's much more stable, very well balanced. I bought it used. Uh, probably got a thousand dollars off of what it costs new mm -hmm. and it, it's made me feel a lot more comfortable riding around because five months and five days after I had my accident I got back on my motorcycle again and it was it was just terrifying to because I didn't know why the motorcycle went down on the accident mm -hmm. and then I'm driving it and my hip is hurting and, and and I'm just thinking oh, anything could cause me to fly into the ground again. So it was just terrifying to use it. But sometimes, you know, a car is great here. When you want to go far or when you want to haul something or when you're going somewhere that has a big parking lot. But most of the places around here, there's nowhere to park anything. You have trouble parking your scooter sometimes. But, so I needed to get on the motorcycle again. But boy, the first few months it was just, I was so worried and, and that's not good to be riding on a motorbike, just terrified out of your mind. What am I missing, you know? Right. And you're looking around and it's just driving me nuts. So I, I knew I needed, I could feel my body healing all the time. All this time, it's, the progression of that healing has slowed down, but yet I still, last week I was not able to move as well as I'm able to move this week. And I don't have to take as many uh, anti-inflammatory things for pain as I used to. Uh, Just briefly explain what, what, you really don't know what happened. You were taking a turn at a very slow, slow, slow rate speed. of speed. My bike only skidded like eight or ten feet. And I have driven that road 50 times. It's one of my favorite places to go for a ride. And I have no idea why the, the rear tire slid out. Usually on my scooter, the front tire would slide out usually, but it was from jamming on the front brake or mm -hmm. hitting water mm -hmm. or gravel or something. And it'd go down pretty easy. And that bike was very stable. It seemed to be. I'd never had any trouble with it before, but that one day, and it, it was just a beautiful day like today. Not hot, and the sky was blue, and everything was fine, and I'm going down there, and I, I'm screaming, no! Before I hit the ground, I, I was so angry, like, why is this happening? And, but boy, as I went down, you know, I felt this leg go the wrong direction. And this one, I, I don't even know how this broke because I didn't hit anything with it. Yeah. But something happened to it because yeah. it just, I, my bone looked like, you know how you unpack something, electronic gear that comes in star foam, <laughs> and then you snap the uh, star foam packing, but uh, a bunch pieces, of little pieces oh, break? Don't tell me that. That's the way my bone I cringe when went. I hear that. It just, they, it took three surgeons four hours to 
piecemeal back together Put Humpty with Dumpty back together with, uh, stainless steel bars and screws. So it was. Uh, you went it down was, a year before that on uh, during some crun on it water, It was longer right? than that. It was a year and a half back, and and then I fell down and I broke yeah, nine, yeah. nine ribs and I cracked this same yeah, hip, but it was the pelvis bone that cracked. This one was the upper femur. Uh, and with that, People there wasn't much to saying, do. But why did he get back on the bike? <laughs> because that's what you do here in Thailand. You you know. I would like to not need to ride a motorcycle, but it's just the way it is here. You just look at the traffic and there's, the motorcycles are three to one or more. And you go to any parking lot and there's acres of motor scooters sitting around. And it, it's a necessity. It's like you got to have it like town. a pair of shoes. In this town. And then, which brings me to the point I want to ask you. How many years now have you been in Chiang Mai? Uh, well, next month, I will have been in the same apartment for four years. Next November 25th, I'll be here five years. Okay. So let me Full ask time. you a question, because I, I talk about the reasons I don't live in Chiang Mai anymore, and you just touched on one of them, and that is because of the traffic. Have, what have you noticed the changes in the amount of time that you've been in Chiang Mai as regards to maybe the attitude of people, maybe the cost, maybe the traffic, anything you can think of that has changed in regards to that uh, and what has stayed the same? All of it. Has stayed All the same or changed? <laughs> both. The, some things about Chiang Mai are just like they were. And the other Such things... Such as? Just, I think the overall atmosphere of the place, people are nice, uh, the weather's the same, uh, but it's, changes are, some are quick and some are incremental and change gradually. And, but there's new houses on my street and new businesses and business change all the time. You think there's something that you no is there and you come back a week later and it's an, it's another something. I went by our something chicken place <laughs> the other day because I was I told you I was in and out uh -huh. of the city really quick. I didn't get a chance to hook up with you that day. And I, I said, Matt, I, she was hungry. I said, I know a great place to eat. And we went, mm -hmm. not only is your chicken place not there, the building isn't there anymore. It's an apartment or something. That's right. Now. And around the corner uh -huh. was a place we used to get cow soy right off the bridge there. Uh -huh building's gone. So many things that I came to see this this time are gone. And the, all the inside the old city where we are now, a lot of the old teak homes, cool little teak homes are gone. And now apartments or guest boutique houses, hotel. Bo boutique, <laughs> that's uh -huh. that's slang for pay, uh, for pay pang. extra. Pang, <laughs> pang uh -huh. here is expensive, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, yeah, okay, that's one of the changes here. That, you but know. traffic, there, there's, I was driving around the moat the other morning at a quarter to seven and there's hardly any traffic at all. Mm -hmm. And if you do it at like midnight, there's mm -hmm. hardly any traffic at all. And in between? But if you do <laughs> it, you know, when school's let out, you, you can hardly move, mm -hmm. you know. And in the mornings when people are all headed off to work, it's, crazy town. You, you, you can go the long way and get there about as fast as if you went the short way That's to get somewhere. That's a good point. I just told Nat that too. You know, and it's the all shortest. just here. You just got to slow down and you keep yourself calm. And you're retired. What difference does it make if you get there 30 minutes from when you thought? You just relax. Be calm. Just chill. Just chilling. <laughs> and You'll get there, and that's the most important part, is just get there without talking to a policeman or an ambulance driver or doctors or, you know, any of those things. Just go slow, and if somebody pulls out in front of you, just stop and let them do their thing, and it doesn't, it doesn't do anything but hurt you to get upset mm -hmm. by any of that stuff. And to yell at somebody, it ain't going to change. Anything that it's just gonna 
Thailand and Chiang Mai is going to be just like Thailand and Chiang Mai wants to be, and it doesn't have anything to do with my feelings <laughs> at all. So you just uh, adjust and and just learn patience. Uh, as a, as a truck driver in the Smith system of learning to drive, they told you when something is jamming you up and you can't get the big truck through, you just stop and let the picture clear, they call it, and you wait for people to, to where you can get the big truck down the road some more. And that's exactly what you gotta do here, walking <laughs> or riding a scooter or your car or whatever, it's just, you know, and prices have gone up a little bit, like uh, every time you see a new menu, you'll see the prices have gone up 5 baht or 10 baht or something like that. Uh, also on new menus now you see many more menus with Chinese writing on them uh, than what there used to be when I Absolutely. first got here. And uh, I like Chinese people. I know they, they get a bad rap, but they're, they're always good they, for making you smile because they'll stop the motorbike in the middle of the street and get a map out and start talking mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Or take a picture. Or right in the middle of any a lane. number of stuff. But they're, they're and that just, makes you laugh, huh? They're, yeah, they're just mm. they're just cute. <laughs> I don't know about cute. It, it's like it, it causes. Well, that's it. the way I try to look yeah, at it. Yeah, well, that's uh, a good way to look at it. Um, and the Thai people are so I don't know what what the word would be. You know, they're not honking and screaming or anything at them. They just go around. Thai them. people look at that and. And it's like you can see they want to get mad too, but but they don't because it's not the thing for them to do. I mean, but, they're, 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 uh, they're, it's they're interesting. Louder, and there's they're, just they're... a lot more Chinese people oh. than, than there was here five oh. years ago. And I was just in Chiang Rai. Chiang Rai is overrun with Chinese too because they have the road going right into Chiang Rai mm -hmm. now. And last time I was in Chiang Rai, it was a tiny little town. I said, if you have any fear of riding a motorcycle. Don't go to Chiang Mai because the traffic's pretty bad. Go to Chiang Mai, you're just not gonna have to any worries. You'll be able to just go down, not anymore. I was up there on a motorbike before my accident. So it's been over a year now. But I didn't notice any difference in traffic at all. It was, and I was in a rainstorm too. Just pouring down, my shoes were full of water. and raining and traffic and you're waiting in a lot a lot of traffic there now oh yeah there it's a I, big bigger city than it used to be it is it was a sleepy little city before and that was and, only three four years ago so this whole area there's there's more uh internet nomads that live here now too they used to just be backpackers and stuff and there's still plenty of them too uh but you see more younger people living here now uh, on a full-time basis. So, uh, you know, but it's still Chiang Mai. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful place. Everybody can find, if it, if you don't like something here, you move farther out or farther a, in. Yeah, or, exactly. You know, it's just, if it's your problem. Mm -hmm. And if you look hard enough, you can find these little enclaves are just inside the moat even. There's just some places that look like they've they're just like tropical little jungle gardens that it's a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it, it looks like it's been there eleven hundred years. Yeah. It's just You made a places. good point too, and that is that when I talk about how I think Chiang Mai has changed so much and the things that I don't appreciate about it anymore, and that's the overcrowding, the attitude the, of the people changing a little bit because having to deal with so much tourism every day. But that is central Chiang Mai, the city of Chiang Mai, the old city of Chiang Mai, where all the tourism takes place. If you go out, and I was just mentioning, I don't know if they, they would have seen that video that I just mentioned, just did, before you showed up, about why I don't live in Chiang Mai anymore. I was in my used car guy's shop the other day, and on his coffee table there was a magazine. The magazine was this thick. And it was all basically advertisement for residential projects to sell houses. Mm -hmm. So the, what Chiang Mai used to be now is spread out so wide 
that if you got out to those areas, you still would have some of the infrastructure, shopping, and things like that, without having to deal with some of these issues we're talking about where the traffic isn't bad until you head back into the city. Out there, it's still rice fields around you. You know, they filled it up to mm -hmm. build your residential complex or community, but then around it's still, so that's still good. And the weather out there is great. The people out there are still friendly. The traffic out there is still sane. Look, so there's people real close to us, right here in the middle of Chiang Mai, that are still really friendly. Yeah. But they don't deal with the tourists. Thai people are <laughs> human too. And yeah and that they get stressed and upset and, and then you just run into ornery old folks that just nothing's going to please them and they're no different than any other nationality or race or whatever you you just sometimes run into an ornery person that's not having a good day and and, and there's people that are prejudiced to mm. you because they just assume you don't look like them so you're not one of Or them. they've had to deal with people that aren't nice to them, yes. and then they group and you into so that same lot. there's so many of them that you just shake your head. It's like, please go home. You're making it hard for the rest of yeah. us with your poor behavior, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like your parents didn't raise you right or something, <laughs> but you don't need to be spreading that all over. Now, but, you live very close to the, you live in the old city, basically. Yeah. Do, I mean, I find times within the old city that I see more foreigners than I do. Foreigners meaning not only Caucasians, but also Chinese. I see more foreigners than I do Thai people. Have, do you feel that the old city still has the ambiance and charm that it used to have, even though it's overrun like ants crawling all over this during high season? Is, you, well, yeah. is it the same to you? Uh, I stay home a lot. <laughs> And, <laughs> now, and now when I, I go out, now I, I understand why he said so many nice things about Chiang Mai still is because he doesn't go out much. <laughs> He's well, afraid of falling and getting on that motorbike. That's true. And when I do, I tend to go places that people have seen me in their restaurant. I was at number nine the other day and yeah. they all come up, oh, how are you doing? You know, <clears throat> wanted to speak to me. And I, you know, when I first met you there one time, long time ago yeah you know they had a little girl yeah, like, and now kid. she's like in College. she's doing grade school <laughs> but she's really shot up there and then now they've had another little baby boy and he's over a year old and so i've seen their kids grow up mm. and that whole family work and i stop in there and they still have the best uh, coconut shake in town uh so i feel like that's my one of my little Thai places I like to go where they always know me and greet me and and joke with me and uh, and there's others and Falong restaurants too that I go to that I've been in and I know the owners and and uh, so and I still try new places too and and like you say some of your favorite places you go back and then they're not there and then you try a new place and it becomes your favorite and the next thing you know it's gone and. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have this rotation of places you go and, you know, other places that do really good, you know they're going to be there a lot of years and every month or so you go, mm, man, I, I really need some Mexican food, so off to Salsa Kitchen you go there. You know, so it, there's, but what I like about it is there's a variety here. and A lot of variety. And so, one you of know, the big upsides, you can so. eat. Thai food seven days a week, or you could eat none for a week. Mm -hmm. There's just so many options around it. You know, if you, if you get bored, it's because you slowed your thinking down and not have an open enough mind to like put Try yourself out there and 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 create some interest in your life. Right. And uh, I did a lot of that this year. I've watched more TV, which I'm not proud of. Uh, in the last year, just because I've, but I'm not sitting in a been wheelchair laid, anymore, laid up, yeah, anymore but you rehab, as much. You rehabbed well. You're you're walking without a cane or anything. You're hey, doing good. I I have come in just last week. I came into the 21st century. 
I bought me my first smartphone. Really? That phone that you helped me buy over yeah. at the mall yeah. five years ago. Oh I finally God. got to where I couldn't get any of the buttons to work anymore. I used to do some of them this way, and then to send a message, I had to turn it this way to get the buttons to. And finally, the buttons this way started giving out too, so I thought, it's time. Wow. <laughs> so I bought one of these. Congratulations. <laughs> and it's like, wow. No wonder people sit and stare at these things all the yeah, time. Yeah, no kidding. There's yeah, all no kinds kidding. of stuff. And because I've I've been trying to walk mm -hmm. many places and be active because I get up in the morning and my hip is hurting and it's sore. But the more I walk, I've walked over uh, two days ago. I walked four and a half miles. Wow, that's great. And I. I downloaded a little app that called Pacer that, yeah, yeah. that so you put it on your you hip. Go. Yeah, and it, and you can put all kinds of information about yourself in there. And another one, and you can check the oxygen in your blood and your blood pressure and all these different things that you know. And then you start using that as like your catalyst. To, oh, I only got six thousand steps today. I need to do like eight or nine, or and the, it sets a little goal to. 10,000 steps a day. That's a lot of walking. That's a lot of walking. <laughs> That's over four and a half miles of wow. walking. Uh, but I've done it a few days. Uh, so you just, and it lets you know when you didn't, and it'll give you an average for a week. And, you know, That's so great. It, it's like writing down my expenses, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm over budget or under budget, so yeah. I'm trying to, you know, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous have a 12 step or 10 step program. Well, this is 10,000 steps. 10,000 steps. So step I program. try to get them in every day. So just, you know, something to keep me in my mind and my body, you know, move it or lose it. <laughs> yeah, really. So the bottom line, after this many years, almost six years, what's the bottom line? Are you still happy here? Are you thinking about going anywhere else? You, you, this is your home for the rest of your life, or you, what, what's? Well, give, me, give us the bottom line now I'm, after this much time here, because for the last six months I've been wanting to go to Wahin, where you're at, because mm -hmm. of the beach, because mm -hmm. I like to metal detect, mm -hmm. and that's uh, getting nice your ten thousand steps soft, on the beach. Yes, exactly, <laughs> and. Uh, the longest place I've ever lived anywhere is uh, Oceanside, California. I lived there 17 years. So I look at Wahin is Thai Oceanside. And I'd like living in Oceanside, California. And I think I would like to live in Wahin because I need that activity, that exercise, that excuse, that some place to go. Here I find it's so crowded. You can't get away from people seeing you or a video camera on a street corner or, a, you know, there, it's just there is no privacy here. Mm. You cannot do nothing. Mm. I, I've been thrown out of a couple places trying to metal detect. You know, the, the, the Army Park out yeah. there, the, the yeah. Lake Reservoir, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they've asked me to leave twice. Because you were metal detecting. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I have my drone. And I went to crank it up the other day, and on the app it said you're in a restricted area, you can't fly this. Uh -huh. so, I mean, it came right up You'll on the app. find out where those are. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want them to come after me, you know. But uh, that, you're going to find that because uh, in, in any country like Thailand or Vietnam or any of these, the, the government and the military, so many people are employed by government agencies. And so these these agencies are everywhere, whether it's military or, or government complex or whatever. So you're going to encounter that a lot. Almost all of these parks that they do have here, they do have some nice parks, but they'll have caretakers there. And caretakers see you doing anything strange, then then they run off to somebody at the office, and then somebody comes to talk to you. Yeah, so you brought up a good point. I'll mention this now because I don't think I've ever mentioned it before. Is here. The Thai people, especially security guards, they're sort of intimidated to, to say much. They might go get somebody else that has more authority. Uh -huh. but they're or send you off to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go talk to them. But when I was in Vietnam, the security take their job really serious. I mean, the low-level, run-of-the-mill mm -hmm. security guys, you do something, 
they come tell you, they, they're really emphatic about, no, you can't do this or stop or whatever. A really different attitude. Yeah. Right here, they're, they're the security afraid guards, to They say sort anything. of know their limit. I've never been yelled at or threatened or anything, but they, they have come over and watched me very closely and then say, can, can you come here? And, and the people at the lake that asked me to leave twice were very nice. I mean, they just told me to come and that they wanted me to bring my equipment and they would open up my think case that I carry everything and, oh, they'd look at it. Mm, what's that cost? Mm, that's my hobby. I'm just, you know. And it was more like show and tell than, than they were, you know, looking for any reason to to arrest me or anything. There's nothing like that. It was just, they were you know how curious. to say hobby to in see what it was. I, I, I know how to say hunt metal. Hunt metal. <laughs> I wonder how that trans low, I wonder how that translates high, low, whether, you, right. whether you're out there with a <laughs> the bow and arrow hunting metal or something. Yeah. Well, you know in uh, Hawaii you say aloha. Yeah. Well, in Thai hunt metal is ha low. Yeah, but I wonder if hunt translates to what I you think actually that's right. do. Uh, I have no idea but because hunting, then, this is the thing about that transliteration of saying something that we use when it gets literally translated into Thai, hunt. It, it doesn't always metal. It doesn't work. work all the time. Uh, yeah. uh, but there are uh, people in Thailand, that, that uh, Thai people, that have metal hunting websites mm. and they even sell them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's some Falongs down in uh, Wahin that also have a club down there that I've seen. Oh, by the way, I noticed that you had 21,000 plus people on YouTube. Subscribers. Yeah, yeah that is uh, pretty good. I think you were like number three. <laughs> I, I, it, I, I've always had a soft spot for, for YouTube channels that have like 137 members, you know, and I'll check and see you, and, and I've seen how much your production quality is, and, you know, drones, and, you know, now we got two cameras here, and a camera person, and you know, before we sit over there and you it was stuck me. it on a little... It was me. On a, yes. And over six million views. I know. That, Amazing, that's, isn't it? That's just... Uh, in our Amazing. membership group, you, you know, you get someday you got to show up and say hey there as well, because the people ask the members ask about you as well because you were a member of uh, Bookworm Bruce. So somebody just well, asked me the other day, what happened? I said I'm going to meet Bookworm Bruce and we're going to do a little conversation. If you get, if I get moved down there, but even uh, up here we still have the meetings up here as well and a great group of people up here. Yeah, I I joined for a while and then I unjoined. You've been on and off a few times. <laughs> yeah, more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, and w if I get down to Wahin, because I, I need to acclimate, and I, mm -hmm. so many people know so many things, and I don't want to drive thousands of kilometers around looking for stuff yeah. again. So I, I need that socialization uh, connection great to, down there to help well. me find stuff again w yeah. without driving around and risking yeah. my hip yeah. <laughs> to, to more accidents. Well, uh, Bruce, thanks so much for sitting down with me and catching up with, to me, giving me the information, catching up, but also to everybody else because a lot of people have been asking, whatever happened to Bruce? And, you know, I keep yeah. saying, well, one day I'm going to sit down with you and have a conversation and get everybody back up to speed. Yeah, so I'm, I appreciate you sitting down with us. I'm still retired and I'm happy Still enjoying with that. your time here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know. You have days where you don't enjoy the day. You got stuff Everybody to do that does. don't go right. But sure. you, because you're retired, you can do it another day. That's right. And if it rains that day or you don't feel it's like a full you time can do it job another day. I'm doing nothing. You know? Yes. You never get finished doing nothing. That's exactly right. That's right. All right, Bruce. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And uh, there's always what? An option. There's always an option. That's right. No matter what. Even when it yeah. comes to... There's lots of options. Yeah, actually. and when it comes to falling off a motorbike. <laughs> you can make up options as yeah. you go. And next time I catch up with you, we'll talk about the cost of what that all that happened with the, the medical and how much it costs and how you came out of that as well. 
Okay, yeah. but we'll save that for the Much next conversation. Much better last time than yeah, the first yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're insured this time. All right, JC and Bruce out. See you later. Hey, JC here. If you like that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.